Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're going to make a topwater lure and something completely different from anything I've made so far. So here's a topwater lure I made not too long ago and it's what I would call an almost ideal shape for walk the dog. That is to say it's got this small little flat spot facing down to keep the head up. It's got the tie on eye just below the center line and the wide spot is somewhere around 25% back from the front. I don't want to make this lure. I've already made a lot of walk the dog lures. I want to make a lure that jumps. Essentially that when you twitch it instead of moving to the side or gliding it actually leaps out of the water. That's going to take a little bit of tweaking the hydrodynamics on this thing. So let me show you what I think will work. I want to make this flat spot a good deal larger and I want to move the tie on eye to right about along the center line. I need something that's going to tend to be scooped out a little bit so as it gets pulled through the water it wants to roll upward. And we'll round out this belly just a little more. The tail hook eye I'm going to put just below the center line and while this looks a little funky I think once I refine the drawing a little bit better we'll have something that'll look okay and also jump the way I hope it will. We're going to be making this lure out of a piece of cypress and this is my last little piece that I've got cut out so we're going to have to go out and mill down a small log that I still have laying around. Alright, so this should do me for a few lures. And if this is your first time to the channel, my name's Franco. I'm a professional engineer, a lure maker, a lure designer, and an avid fisherman. And I make these videos to share with you how I include a little bit of engineering and physics into the art of lure design and lure building. Now I need to transfer the design down to the piece of wood. And I like using this blue painter's tape to make it more visible. All right, I've got the center line, I've got it boxed in, and I want it to be four inches total length. And I want the lure to be three quarters of an inch uh, at, the, at its widest point, which will be about an inch back. And I'm gonna divide that thickness so that the most of it is below the center line. And I want the angle of that flat spot to be really close to 45 degrees. And I can eyeball that using that little triangle right there. Now the top is going to take a little bit of finesse. I want to kind of round this over so the head has some bulk. Then I'll lay in this curve. And that's looking pretty close to what I want. I'll probably cut pretty broad on the around the lines to give myself plenty of room to be sure I've got plenty of meat on this thing. Alright, so I don't want to have to redraw this, so I'm just going to draw in what the water line would be if this thing was actually sitting in the water. So I want the tail just slightly under the water and the head just above the water. It's important that that little flipped up tail is under the water. And that's the universal sign for the water surface, a little bobber. So now with the camera tilted, you can see the water line and the attitude that this lure should be. That eye should be just above the water and the back of the lure just below the water so that as I pull it the line will tend to pull that face downward and this swept up tail will act a little bit like the elevator on an airplane and want to drive the tail down and it'll should just pop out of the water.
All right, so we got it cut out and I've gone ahead and sketched in the contour as you would look at the lure from the bottom up because I want the uh, part of the head that forms that flat spot to be a little broader. And unfortunately it creates sort of a suggestive shape. I'm gonna show it to you, but remember this is a family show. You can see it gets a little wider up front. I won't go into any more detail. Anyway, I did that with the curves and some imagination. Let's go back out to the salt. I also left the tail kind of wide because I want that to have a little more influence as it's, get, as it's getting pulled through the water. All right, now with a little bit of work on this uh, belt sander, I should be able to sort of soften some of the features. So my idea is that I want to have the cross section of the lure more or less round. It'll, it'll narrow a little bit to the top, but not very much because I do want to keep a lot of sort of surface area right here. So as it gets pulled through the water, it'll want to jump up. So hopefully it'll look pretty good and it won't be an embarrassment sitting in my tackle box. So I've got the shape coming along pretty well. You can see I have a nice flat spot here and it stays kind of broad in the tail. This little jumping face will stay about that size. It might get a little smaller as I sand down uh, some of these flaws out of this thing. All right, so here's where we are after the belt sander sanding. It's pretty rough still, but it has the general shape. So mostly it's gonna be hand sanding. I'll get back to you when I'm a lot closer to a finished product. All right, I've got it sanded about as smooth as I want it. I've got a couple little sort of mars and little chinks that I put in it by mistake with my fingernail. I'll get that with a little bit of UV resin. But right now, I really need to seal it and sort of get it ready for the final sanding, and I'll do that with UV resin. I'll just give it an initial coat and let it set in the chamber. So I'll see you after that first clear coat. All right, so I've gone ahead and gotten this sanded down with a 320 sanding block. And now I need to figure out how to put weights in this thing. First, I'm gonna go ahead and drill holes for some temporary screw eyes uh, so I can at least hold on to this thing and also use the hooks I wanna use as part of my weight scheme. I should do it. I've already got the belly eye drilled in and that dark line you see there, that's just a superficial crack. Let's make the twist eyes. I'll need three of them. And I cut off about a four inch piece of that wire. I decided to go ahead and glue them in now instead of waiting. This epoxy sets up really quickly, so I gotta kinda work fast. Turning it backwards counterclockwise makes those little twists into a, like a little pump, and it actually carries the uh, epoxy down in the hole a little better. All right, so this is part of my method of finding out where to put the weight to have this lure set in the water the way I want it to. Now I'm just gonna poke holes in this tape every 
eighth of an inch or so. All right, that should do it. Now I'm going to grab one of the little magnetic pins that I make for hanging my lures and I'm going to use it on the dry race board. And before I hang it up, I'm going to go ahead and just stick a couple of hooks, the hooks I intend to use, and I'll poke this through one of the little holes, the one I think will be about right. And that looks like it's just about right. So all I need to do now is mark where this vertical line intersects the body and that's where the weight will go. And that should give me a good mark to be able to go ahead and drill my hole. All right, so now I know where to put the weight. The amount of weight I'm gonna put in it is just enough for stability. And I know what the maximum amount of weight would be because I know the density of this wood. And I've gone over several times how I find the density and then use it to calculate the weight. And since this one is not so critical because it's a floating lure, I'm not gonna go into it. But if you want to see how I actually do it, you can check in the description. I'll put a link to one of my other design videos so that you can see what the process actually is. But I know that it would take about 12 and a half grams of added weight besides the hooks and the hardware to make this thing sink. And I don't want it to sink, but I'm putting a four and a half gram split shot right in that spot that I've marked a little better. And that means I'll have to drill a three eighths hole. Okay, that'll do it. And I'll just pack this sawdust back in there and crazy glue it all together. A little spritz of accelerator and in about five seconds this thing will be able to be sanded down and then I'll top it off with a little bit of UV clear and that'll give it a nice, smooth, perfect finish. All right, just a little bit of sanding and we're ready to paint. All right, I almost forgot to drill in the eye sockets, but they're in there now. We can paint now. I'm gonna give it another little wipe down with alcohol and then we'll get to painting. And my intention is to do it in a saltwater color pattern. So I'm probably gonna cover it first in opaque white, then come back with some silver in the middle of the body sides. Uh, and then I'll put some transparent yellow to uh, turn that a little bit gold. And then I'll come in with some dark blue on top with maybe a little bit of scale. Finish it off with some black, maybe put a strike eye on it and probably give this a little bit of red. All right, let's get painting. go with some transparent orange. All right, I've got some kind of large scale mesh on here. I'm gonna start off with transparent blue, mist it on the sides, and then I'm gonna come in with pearlescent blue and put it a little heavier and darker on top.
pretty happy with that. Clear coat ought to really make this thing really explode. But first, gotta put the mid coat on to make sure the paint is sealed. turn the lights on it'll be turning in there for a few hours but I really won't get back to it till tomorrow so the next time you see this we'll be down at the dock trying to get some water footage of this thing jumping I think all right I got it out of the chamber and I put some hooks on it and I really think it just came out really nice I like the color scheme and the clear coat is almost well, actually, it's flawless. It actually came out really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if it floats the way I designed it to. So that looks just about right. Just tail down a little bit and the whole head out of the water. So when I pull on it, it should jump out of the water. That's the theory anyway. And we'll take it down to the lake while we still have some light. We're losing light pretty fast. So, so let me gather up the GoPro and we'll head down to the dock. All right, here we are down at the dock and hopefully we'll have enough light to do this. The sun's going down pretty quick. Let's see what it does. Oh yeah, there it goes. You just need a little more line out it definitely comes out of the water not quite the way i thought it would oh yeah it comes out without very much of a twitch oh look at that oh yeah it, it jumps out of the water i wonder if it'll walk the dog let's see if it walks the dog oh look at that Oh, that looks really weird. Let's see if I can get a little longer cast and try it from out here. Oh, yeah. It definitely just leaps right out of the water. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm not really popping it very hard. It just kind of does a little leap out of the water. Oh, that is so cool definitely cool all right let's see if I can't get some uh, close-up slow-mo shots <laughs> The sun is going down. Let me show you how it behaves when you just reel it back. It kind of skitters. It jerks around side to side. So that's actually an option. Just kind of scooting it along the top, especially off the top of little waves. It ought to do pretty nicely. Really can't wait to get this out in the salt water. I got a good feeling about this thing. So if you guys have found this interesting or fun to watch, give me a like. And if you haven't subscribed, certainly subscribe. It doesn't hurt you, it helps me. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you all next Friday.